Very excited to welcome today's guest. I first heard about him about this time last year. Adrian Lee was on talking about sacred sites and really working with the energies of these sacred sites in group meditation. And then um, Sandy Humby came on at the end of last year and was talking about um, similar topics. And I thought, who is this Rory? Uh, Rory Duff, I'm going to have to look him up. And as we started um, looking into his work and we started talking, there was just so many synchronicities with um, people and places that it just felt very aligned for him to welcome him on today and particularly at the time this time of equinox so um welcome to new earth podcast rory thank you very much sarah and um yes i mean what can i say this synchronicity strikes you have to sort of sit up and take notice and and this is why i'm here um because you see all the people you mentioned i think oh well you know there must be something along the lines of uh, exploring here i think that's one of the, the, the interesting things about synchronicity is to explore what, what it's about and where it's heading so thank you well thank you so much for coming on um Rory is a geobiologist and a world expert on um the earth's energy lines so would you mind just to start by just explaining a little bit about the work that you do, Rory. Okay, um, thank you. Uh, that changes over the years, actually. <laughs> but uh, it, it started off um, from a geo geobiological perspective, perspective of, of well, what, how is the Earth affecting life? That's a study, and, and uh, it's it's a large field. But but uh, what, what intrigued me was. Um, why certain locations had an effect over people rather than others and uh, that meant looking into really why why locations were where they were and um, I thought maybe there's a, a connection geologically um, the, the connection it is in some way guided still with the, the different density rocks underneath um, but then you know, begin to just map where these areas are uh, energetically. You can do that, and uh, so I, I, I just purely out of curiosity, goodness, really twenty years ago now, I just started mapping the lines, the energy lines, and, and the, where they intersected at the nodes, and begun to realize patterns, um, daily movements, hourly movements of these lines. So it became quite engrossing from a scientific point of view just to study that. Um, but from then on, you begin to realize these aren't just lines. They're not just even vibrations. There is a deep connection to source consciousness. Um, so that leads you into really looking at what is consciousness, what is universal consciousness. And uh, and if, you've lead, if you're leading life with, with questions and you open up to the universe for answers, the universe tends to, to, to lead you to... The work of amazing people or experiencing thoughts from other people and and answers can come along that way and not not necessarily all of them but the direction certainly and so look into universal consciousness i met an amazing um engineering physicist called ron pearson who spent 24 years looking for uh, looking uh, finally coming up with a new theory on the creation of the universe and the full theory of quantum gravity which explained the intelligence behind the universe explained how healing works it, it looked at uh, all this uh, business of what we're going through now with, with the evolution of consciousness that steiner talked about his theory underpins this and explains how this happens and and the geobiology was really well if this universal consciousness is is working to do this, how is it doing this? And it, it's actually doing this through very deep seated ultra low frequency vibrations. Um, so it's like these energy lines are the way it's happening. It's like the first indicator. So studying the lines is like, well, this is this is beginning to give us first indications of, of change uh, and uh, and how it's affecting consciousness ourselves, uh, and, and that's why. People gather in the same place over many centuries, but in different cultures, different religions, they still draw into the same locations because these are the places where you can connect with the universal consciousness that much more easily. So as to what I do, it just it just 
<laughs> keeps keeps going on from one to the next to the next. It, it's totally fascinating. And what I find so fascinating is, you know, a lot of the guests that have been on have been consciousness explorers. But because you're doing it from a scientific point of view, it, it just gives a really different angle on this. It's kind of measurable. Um, that be interested to ask you, during your time of studying the energy lines, have you noticed that they've been kind of shifting more in recent years as we're going through this shift of consciousness of the connective? Is there an inter interaction in that way? So, uh, well, yeah, that, what we first started absorbing, uh, uh, observing, there was no real thinking about it was leading anywhere in particular for for many years up until 2017 um, we, we were seeing uh, lines moving from side to side uh, with established frequencies um, but from 2017 onwards we, we feel as, well the lines has doubled in width and we thought well, what's going on here what's happening and then the the harmony times, because we had harmony times four times a year when the lines all move exactly from side to side, precisely the same time. And and that lasted for about three quarters of a day. Now it's it, we went up to a day and a half, then three days. Now it's over 45 days long. So something's changing this. But what, what we can't tell too much is what happened 50 years ago to the lines? What happened to, to the lines, 50, you know, it, it, their widths 50 years ago? Is this something cyclic over 50 years or 500 years or or 6,000 years? And, um, and, then, and then you have to start looking at well, what's causing them. Where's the direct source for energy that's coming from these lines? And, and uh, observations, just making observations begins to help you come up with questions and answers. And that uh, began to lead us to, um, well, lead, lead me to, to see the connections between energy lines and, and the universal symbol for them, which is serpents and dragons, and how tribes and cultures over the ages all relate to these and talk, talk to them about serpents and dragons. And uh, it's not long before you realize there's, there's a, a, a cyclic pattern that emerges that is ingrained in the psyche of mankind to know that deep down we go through regular changes uh, of consciousness and Steiner talked about it the move from group consciousness to, to individual consciousness to group consciousness and um, he 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 had ideas on how this happened and he, he measured it he, he measured streams of energy he, he he actually wrote his 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 uh, right, you know, he started by writing uh, talking about evolution of consciousness up in north wales at penn mine moor uh, in in uh, 2000 uh, 1923 and he gave lectures there like 13 lectures to a small community up there exactly on the evolution of, evolution of consciousness and every day he was he was walking in the hills up in the druid circle there the druid circles the standing stones and so he he was he was seeing them connected to these energies this whole cycle and we see this in um, Goethe's uh, beautiful fairy tale, which is subtitled uh, "The Beautiful the Green Snake and the Beautiful Lily." And here we have this culmination of this fairy tale, which is the permanent bridge between the land of senses and the land of spirit. Uh, and the snake sacrifices itself to become the permanent bridge. Of course, the snake serpent is is uh, synonymous with the energy lines, and you begin to see this whole fairy tale is is uh, uh, an analogy of this move back to group consciousness. And that that's now mirrored in, in I know, we found 15, 16 different universal prophecies around the world saying and talking about this same cyclic event, which happens roughly every 12,000 years to mankind's consciousness. And um, I guess that's when we begin to see that the observations we were making on the energy lines was related to the way our mind perceives the reality around us and that 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 began to make it personal because it's it's how we perceive these these lines and one of the, the things about uh, reality and truth is uh, and, and the minds that we have is that uh, nothing is real in as much as it's solid it's all energy 
it's just yeah. our minds tuning into this you know it's interesting because you're talking about the observation of the energy lines you know from a quantum physics point of view observation changes reality so it's interesting you know as more and more people are perhaps coming together in groups observing these energy lines and becoming more interested in them you know how how much of an effect that's having on on them do, do you see it as a as a sort of conversation as a as a dialogue there is a dialogue here but i have to stop one correction what i think i don't agree with at all in this observation of changing reality I don't, I don't accept that one, one bit. It actually stems from something called the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics, which is based on, on the observations of uh, waves and particles going through two slits and being picked up on a yes. vacuum plate. Uh, the, the, the thinking at the time, and, and still unfortunately amongst main free, mainstream science, is that uh, the act of observation collapses the wave function, and, and that brings about the reality. Uh, it's because they couldn't explain how a particle could go through two slits at once. And they're talking that in, 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 they move into the absurdities of, of multiple dimensions. You don't need multiple dimensions. You, you, you can use it all with three, but, but based on different matter frequency systems rather than dimensions. So the, 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 the real thinking here is we, we never can with our minds perceive the one true reality there's no other reality there is one reality but it's our perception of reality that can change and that is a critical thing because as we then widen our perceptions we can see more we can feel more and hear more so heightened awareness is about uh, expanding our perception of reality as opposed to this idea of try, trying to make reality ourselves that's you know? really interesting that's very interesting because that that feels to be what's happening as we shift into new earth that people's perceptions are widening you know and and it's almost like a reclaiming a lot of that those sensory things that have been have been shut down in a way which is that something you can relate to absolutely um, the if you think about this oneness, this unity consciousness where we can experience all things at once and all minds are part of the same universal mind, we just have a small fragment of it. Um, it, it, it it's our own mind and how we tune into our senses. We, we currently uh, hear within a band of, of vibration. We, we, fit, we actually see within a, a, a visual range. You, know, and you don't see into ultraviolet and infrared. But we feel within a range of feeling of, of matter, and yet matter too exists on different frequencies. So it's all about different frequencies and our, our, our mind expanding to experience greater range, ranges of all these frequencies. That includes uh, people around us, animals around us. Uh, uh, um, it, it, it actually, the new science explains things like telepathy, clairvoyance, how we become prophets. Old science is not interested in that. They, they'll t keep telling you that when you're dead, you're dead. Uh, this, this is the old reductionist viewpoint that the, the mind is purely part of brain function. Nothing could be further than the truth. If a scientist goes on about that, just say, shut up. We have a science of quantum gravity that doesn't require that ridiculous nonsense. And, and as soon as you get away from that rubbish and you, you can accept that the, that uh, the universal consciousness must exist and that we're part of it and that we're all becoming part of it again, going back into group consciousness. Uh, and it's a completely natural cyclic thing. Oh, yeah, we can have we've got all the mathematics that supports it. All, all of that's been done, which is what's so beautiful. We can begin to explain what's happening to our minds right now. Uh, and if if we really wish wish to, we can uh, be ahead of the game. We can ride that wave of change. And this is this is the real challenge that we now face in the next few years is to is to keep pace with this rate of change. And not it's not too rapid. It's not. It's just that. But if we do nothing. The, 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 as I see it, there's there's this great separation that is occurring. It's been predicted by Steiner by lots of people, but there needs to be a separation between different parts parts of mankind. It's like in, until you have that separation where people are awakening, who then go on to help create the environment such that their awakening process actually helps others to awaken through this morphic resonance that Rupert Sheldrake talks about. So yes. we need to separate to, to, to grow 
to bring the others across. And and that's happening right now. Uh, um, but you, you have to think differently. You have to release, uh, allow yourself to go with this new flow because the energies that are coming through right now are literally rewiring our brains, our head brains, our heart brains, uh, um, and and some people are suffering and, and really don't know why. Some people are fighting it and, and getting into all sorts of difficulties. So yeah, sorry, I could. I could can I, can I just clarify? Because I'm not sure if I totally understood correctly. But you're are you saying that the polarization that's occurring at the moment it's kind of necessary? It's a part of the process because. You know, I know ultimately that we're we want going to move towards unity consciousness, but at the moment there is so much polarization. But you're feeling that enables us to kind of create an energy field of around our soul tribe that that kind of allows that vibration to raise, so then we can bring others with us at a later stage. Is that is that it's what a, you're saying? Yeah. It's an absolutely natural part of change for separation. It's a bit like uh, th there are some um, uh, seeds that cannot, cannot uh, produce new shoots unless they've been heated in a forest fire. You have to like uh, have the fire. You have to go through that challenging period of time because that's where we really learn our biggest lessons through challenge. And and again, uh, it's mirrored in all the tales. It's it's the hero's tale when you're going through this uh, uh, zone of darkness, this um, um, dark night of the soul. Um, it, it's it's going through the, the like the shamanic abyss down into the underworld we are we are going collectively through this abyss but there's a few of us that are going ahead of ahead of ahead of everybody else and there are some who are well ahead I mean, I'm, I'm i'm way behind in that case i'm not trying to catch up myself but but by by a few going through at the, at the front then they're like the beacons that everyone can say oh look we'll just uh, something's happening let's just try and join them and at the moment it's like well all you have to do is just go with the flow don't fight it uh and all i can try and do is say well if you want to make it easier on yourselves go to the great learning centers to teach us and, and the serpent in the, in the gnostic garden of eden uh, which of course is another story which has been corrupted but the gnostic uh, uh, serpent in, in, on the tree of life the tree of recognition was known as the instructor the teacher, which is what the energy lines are. They, they teach us. So you go and meditate on these sacred sites and the energies will, will gift us the insights the, uh, that, that allow us to, to begin to understand what's going on. And, and collectively, and this is the, the one thing I have realized more recently is that we can't do this individually. We've got to do it collectively through small groups to begin with. Uh, and, and, and more and more small groups on, on wonderful sacred sites around the world has this impact for massive change. And, and as, as more of that takes off, there, there, there is a sort of wonderful ripple effect around that area and more people are drawn to that. And can you talk a little bit about the work that you're doing with your network? Is it Sacred Network um, to support people in this coming together on sacred sites, meditating? you know, knowing where the sites are. It, and is that worldwide? Because I'd be very interested to hear, like in Portugal, you know, to be able to connect in with these groups yeah. and maybe start these groups. Right. Well, first thing, it, it was not meant to, to be a support network. Okay. The support has to come from the groups. It's, it's designed to help bring groups together for people to find people in their areas uh, and to, for them to have a platform for they can, where they can communicate uh, in privacy, uh, to arrange to meet on site or online for medita med meditations, uh, and it, it's yeah as, as it stands, it, it's it's in its infancy. We we have a lot more sites, sacred sites to put up. Um, we're developing the second phase right now, uh, which was which is uh, going to include the ability for people, uh, facilitators to um, demonstrate what they're doing uh, and, and run classes. They, they can run um, spiritual workshops, med meditations, that kind of thing. So there's going to be that where you can actually see somebody's work um, book up with them. So that, that'll, that'll be coming on. Um, and I've been starting the Sacred Path School, 
and we've been running modules for, for three years now testing them which is helping groups go through things like universal prophecies and, and through an understanding of different ways that people are spiritual around the world purely so they begin to work as groups again because we've lost that art of working with groups and and uh and to give you a reason why you, you can read a book or you can look at a painting and you can get a perception of it. And you think, well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think I understand that. Until you start sharing what you've experienced to a group of people who then share with you what they've experienced. And you're thinking, holy mackerel, how did I miss that? I mean, I can't see that. I can't feel that. But these people can. And yet they completely missed my my. my so you begin to realize how completely pointless it is to do things on your own anymore. You're going to be way off off the mark. And then when you start finding a group that's working well together and they start sharing insights and they meditate together and and, um, and even share dreams together, that, that magical things start happening. There's synergy uh, where you can record the amount of hits between the group that have happened on, 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 on group meditations. And this is not that's not really guided meditation. This is just you, you go into yourself and you, and you connect um, and then allow your mind to start imagining. And um, the imagination be, leads to inspiration and then leads to insight. And this is nothing not, nothing new. This is what Steiner talked talked about. This is what uh, Jung practiced. And uh, um, yeah. So it's the, the route forwards working in small independent groups and, and uh, platforms designed to do that. But it, it's going to take its time, you know. We're, we're, Definitely we're not, the way not. forward, you know. And and yeah. actually, you know, that in itself is a, is a journey because we've we've stepped out of that being able to do that that self empowerment that sovereignty, you know, being able to speak what's coming through us and and know that we're all valuable as a kind of piece in the puzzle. Um, you know, I've been um, working with the People's Health Alliance and, um, you know, that's a group and, and it's it's a similar process. It's really enabling everyone to make their own contribution. You know, that's it's such an important process. We're, we're, yeah, we're going through a real uh, attritional period right now when you've got the, the large corporations that absolutely want one size fits all solutions because it's economical profitable for them and yet we're moving into a collective environment where uh, it's holistic uh, and, and uh, individual sovereignty uh, is becoming so much more important and and, and when, when you talk about a group it's not a group of people who will think the same no. you know, it, these, these, this is this is hard work to get a, a group a really good group six eight ten individuals 12 individuals who are really completely different from each other you know <laughs> overcoming their initial well i wouldn't want to go and drink with him you know <laughs> it's just it's just and then realizing that you need that difference of individual sovereignty to get that all-round perspective and then you begin to recognize well that is the future and, and um the answers aren't going to come from one solution and in the medical situation we can see that now with um how they want to deliver solutions for us with regards to uh, what unfortunately are going to be increasingly individual problems because the the big elephant in the room, which I've said before, that nobody wants to talk about, is the fact that our magnetic field, Earth's magnetic field, is rapidly dropping. And they're, they're just not discussing it. And the implications of that is that we get a lot more cosmic energy coming through to our atmosphere, which produces far greater amounts of gamma ray radiation and neutrinos. What are the effects of those? Well, we're still learning, but they are highly evolutionary. And uh, our, our cells are mutating, that they're being killed. They're, they're, if you look at the, the ultra low frequency vibrations coming from the inner core, uh, literally almost from source, we're getting rewired, we're getting reprogrammed. I mean, uh, our cells in our body, which are all individually in a way sovereign because they all exhibit a form of intelligence on their own that's that's changing everything <laughs> right, it's, it's, a a huge, it's a huge process that we're going through and you know some people are feeling it more than others or even just at certain times you know it, it's almost like go you can go through a couple of weeks where you really feel it and then kind of back on track with it again mm -hmm. um i know that 
this is a very important time moving into the equinox today. Um, and how do you see that? Do you see that as a harmony, as a balance point, the equinox? Yeah, but yes and no. This is the interesting thing about how these energies teach us. And, and I do write about it in my recent newsletter. So if, you, if anyone's interested, it's on my website. But you can just download a PDF of it. And, and something we did, we discovered in, in, win, in the winter solstice, how many groups that I know were, were really buffeted around with, with turbulence from the wind and, and, and stormy, dark grey conditions. And the intent was to, to send collective peace into the world, especially to some of the troubled spots. And, and to hold that that peace within us. And by the end of the meditation of about three three groups of 15 minutes, in about an hour, we, we, we actually, as a group where I was, had had gelled as a group such that we were pretty amazed that, that we'd come out with blue skies, the wind had died, just by holding peace within and trying to hold the balance within. And it led me to thinking, well, we're not going to be given what we want. We're going to be given exactly the opposite so that we can actually hold within us that which we need to hold in us. So we learn how to hold within. And, and, and the newsletter, I mentioned it before, was, is about right now in the world, the, the feeling that we're being given is one of despair. And it's easy to look at where it's coming from. It, 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 we have, we have the Western governments who completely ignore the people. They do what they want to do. And, you know, 60, 70 percent of the people have cottoned on to this. And there's that there's, there's nothing they can do. You know, you, you could have 80 percent of the country not wanting the country to go to war, but they'll go to war because it's run by a few people who make money out of it. And, and there's a growing air element of despair, not a great amount, which is OK, but it's underneath there. People are getting anxious and we can come to why they're feeling this despair in them. They're, they're actually feeling other people's despair. Um, so how do you counter despair? Well, um, it's it's hope. It's holding positive expectations. So when we, when we uh, meditate for this equinox, uh, this intent is to send hope and expectation out into the world. And we do that in the face of this despair by holding positive expectation for the future. There will be no war. There will be no complete central government control because we can readdress that balance within us by just focusing on positive expectation. And there, and there are great visualization techniques to do this with. You know, you know, watching the rising sun, you know, a, a drum beat. Just, just imagine yourself at uh, the start of a race, you know, the butterflies in your stomach, which will just make you feel that just down here in your, in your solar plexus. Just f focus on that, uh, that butterfly feeling. Allow it to grow, thinking, you know, something good is going to happen. You know, if we all come together, something really good is going to happen. And it's just going to flood out into the world. And when we do that, we'll change the timelines. I absolutely know. But they've probably got a plan to kick off with NATO entering into Ukraine with a false flag, false flag, flag attack sometime in April. It's not going to happen there. Because too many of us will hold positive expectation within us that we will not have that. That timeline's just not going to exist after this, this equinox. I totally believe that. I totally believe that that we can shift the timelines and that, that that's what's happening. You know, we already that's that's happened a lot. You know, we've already shifted so much. Um, I'm interested what you were talking about with the, you know, the weather changing when you were focusing on peace in the world. And um, I'm assuming that you were at a node point when you were doing those meditations in a group. Um, so I'm interested in the role the Earth is playing in that, because my understanding is that the, the Earth is very supportive, nurturing, you know, you know, really wants to to nourish and nurture. And there's just such a connection between our own consciousness and the Earth's consciousness. Um, how do you see that playing out as the Earth I, shifts? I, I think we've got a slightly bigger problem than, than the Earth helping us. Um, and, and you could you could look to the the animal kingdom, the birds. They're all willing us on. We're like the 
the last cog. Everyone's waiting for us. They, they, they don't need us in any way. However, uh, there is something about everyone and everything has to go through this evil evolution of consciousness. And if we don't go inside and help to do this, then it's it's just not going to happen for everything. It's like, uh, so them helping us, well, in, in the extent that they're producing the, uh, an environment that is conducive towards us learning the lesson. And it's up to us to learn the lesson. There's always choice that we have. And that's the key. We have we have to be given a choice and we have to make the right choice. Um, but, but but this evolution of the of the earth, you know, as a geologist, you think, oh goodness, how does the earth go through an evolution? But that that one's come through too. We've understood what's going on, and it's it's to do with the intrinsic symmetry that the that that, that forms crystals in the earth. Um and that too undergo undergoes this evolution of increasing and decreasing amounts of symmetry that produce crystals. Um, so it's going into a sort of supersymmetry where you know we've gone from into cubic symmetry, and then we're going into sort of uh, the, the symmetry of a sphere. So the, there's an element of the, the very fabric of the building blocks of of the earth itself, of matter itself. The, the, the sacred geometry at the roots is the is the degrees of symmetry within the geometric plan if you like of the universal consciousness and that's what's bringing everything to unity consciousness and so if, if we're if we are wanting to be part of that we have to connect to become part of everything where that exactly leads well we'll have to see but uh, uh we can look at uh what the legends have said before uh, on how we left group consciousness and Steiner studied that in, in his first epoch after the Atlantic, Atlantean age, the, the epoch of the Rishis and Holy Rishis. And, and the, he, you, you can hear uh, and read texts, uh, I mean, the Vedic texts and, and the Sumerian texts uh, of, of people's experiences of what it was like coming back out from group consciousness through the darkness of the abyss and, and everything they experienced coming out. And coming back into individual consciousness, where they had to learn how to work to eat again, and all that sort of stuff, it had to, it, that was that was to be incredibly challenging. Well, we're not going into it the reverse way. We've got we're going through this abyss of darkness right now, and and it's it's the different form of challenges. But the good news is, it'll be pretty cool when we get there. So, Absolutely. But we can't do nothing. Absolutely. So, what would you advise people to do? <laughs> I'm not sure advise is quite the right way of saying it. I mean, it's not it, it, it's not a, up to anyone individually to tell yeah. people what to do. Yeah. Uh, if you're feeling like there's something different and happening inside you and you're not sure what it is, um, try and find out where a sacred site is. Even if it's a church, just go there, be peaceful, be quiet, to stop that inner voice, just connect with, with what's going on. And make observations in nature. Um, nothing is stupid anymore. You know, if, you, if, you, if a bird is talking to you, shut up, let it talk. You, know, you can imagine a conversation with a bird. This is this is the great. This, you know, I, I'm reading the Red Book and, uh, uh, ages ago, and I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Carl Jung talking to an elemental. Okay, thinking, goodness, you know, this is a, a top scientist and intel intelligent man and he sees he's having this game of imagination talking to an elemental up until the point the elemental is now answering him with information he couldn't have possibly known so the, the character the subconscious mind has taken over and is now feeding information back to you about the true nature of reality and he's been taught this we, we can do the same just by having those creative moments, surrender to that creative, allow the insights to come through. Don't be a judgmental, just let it unfold and, and ask to be helped. Ask to be shown synchronicity, explore synchronicity. If you just do that alone, you, you'll, you'll be propelled along in the path of the world that you should be going on. And, and, and uh, although it's tricky, uh, a, a phrase I heard many years ago was to become an inverse paranoid. Where the world is out to do you good 
you could try it easily just by if, if you drive and you're looking for a car parking place on a busy day in town just try by ex just thinking oh someone will pull out just in front of me and i'll have a space i know people who do this and it is unbelievable how good they're, they're at it unbelievable you just you know you think, well that's just magic no it's just how it is you know i knew a chap once who was who who was always he never knew when his next bit of business was come to meet the targets at the end of his month. He just knew he would. Never knew how it was going to happen. He just had this high level expectation. Sure as eggs are eggs. He hit his targets every month. <laughs> I'm just interested to backtrack, you know, the things you're saying here about, because earlier on you talked about, you know, not we're not creating our reality. So how does that work with what you're, you know, what you're suggesting here? We all have choice. We can choose to do whatever we want to do. But there's one sort of choice we, 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 we can make, and that's to follow a path in life, which is one that we set for ourselves beforehand. You can call it a vocational path. Uh, you can call it uh, the path of individuation, like uh, uh, Jung says. You could talk, call it the Grail path or the Cathar path. There's, there's names for it. It's not a new thing. But it, it does re re require you to, to recognize that uh, you're not just a product of your brain you're not just a product of free will that your free will and choice has has consequences in this world yes you can make up your own future if you want to set out to become prime minister you can plan your way to become prime minister they're all to a penny now anyway so what's the point but thing is if you want to follow the path of a, of a life that you need to, to lead and you don't know what you need you don't know as a character what you need to become a more perf perfect person if you like you you need to trust the universe a bit to 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 give you the challenges yeah. so that you develop in the way you need to develop and if you follow that path you'll get the synchronicities now synchronicities don't always lead you to nice happy things <laughs> they'll leave you to, to 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 learning times when you actually think yeah. oh wow okay i have to take the good with the bad so um that's where the power of the choice comes and and, and that's where predestiny can be predictable too compared to it's, it's uh, no. fascinating stuff isn't it i mean it, it it's it, it is that co-creative energy isn't it it's that dialogue you know and it, it comes back to that, that that and and humility really being in the you know really it really needing to hold that humility so that there, there's that potential to have that conversation because it starts from mm -hmm. a point of not knowing in a way yeah, and, and you'll know from he from being a healer that um you, you say look if i'm supposed to be able to heal you i, I will do my best but you know it, it's like a healer can't heal anybody they have to get permission no. and, and 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 it's well, well why can't you heal everybody well you know i i can only channel the energy to to do if it's supposed to be right i'll do what i can yeah um, and it's the between them and god ultimately we just can facilitate that potential for if that's yeah. meant to if that's what's meant to happen so it's very it's a, it's very very interesting um but you can get better at healing as well you can become more successful there are principles that can really help you become really good at it Absolutely. I mean, just the, the, the classic thing is you, you do it in, in, in some areas where there's no energy at all, or you could do it on a very powerful energy place. That, that, that's immediately going to help you. That's, in, that's amazing. That's so insightful. Is there anything else that you feel is important to share today, Rory? Uh, I, I, I think in the near term future, we need to we need to manage ourselves and the way we think and the way we feel um we're going through really difficult transitional times and they're a challenge that we can step up to and, and, and in a nutshell this equinox is about challenging despair within us and holding balance because with positive expectation within it so that, that that is that also go back to holding peace within us we're going to hit in the summer the joys of the summer will be perhaps harder to reach because we'll be given great sadness. So we can see that that challenge coming and we need to to probably 
what I try and teach people to do is to be able to stop this to positive experiences. Remember when you were really joyful. Remember when you had really high positive expectations. Remember when you felt really peaceful. Remember when you felt really wonderful self-esteem. Go back to those moments in time and relive them because they'll help you re bring that feeling back together at these critical moments in time. So when you're surrounded with, with, with sorrow, you can feel that joy again more easily. And, and if you can do that, and if you're with others who can do that, it, it will spread. That, that, that's, uh, that's the remarkable thing about how a group can help each other. I've had uh, another question actually arise out of what you've said there um, about polarities, because, you know, my understanding of polarities is that they're part of the same continuum, you know, so therefore, if you if you go to one extreme, you're actually potentially, you know, interacting or drawing towards you the other, you know, without even realizing it, you know, so it's kind of, I'm always interested in looking at, you know, finding, you know, from a healing point of view, finding my healthy place on that continuum, you know, so it's acknowledging both. And it's like, you know, for some people, it may be like, if you look at the masculine and feminine, it may be that it's more masculine, you know, or more in the head than in the heart. You know, some some people sit more, much more comfortably in who they are in the, the feminine sort of heart embodied aspect. And that's different for each person. So it it's, for me, that polarity, it's, it's how can we start to find that so that we're actually, because it's actually a place of acceptance then, isn't it, of, of, yeah. of all of it, you know, and that's, is that how we start to move out of polarization, do you feel? Well, well Sarah, you're right in what you're saying, but you need to just add one more way of thinking, because polarity is about two aspects of the same thing. Mm -hmm. Where it's been really uh, unfortunately uh, deviated from on purpose is is the concept of opposites. Opposites don't occur in nature. It, it hot and cold is degrees of heat. Light and dark is the amount of photons. Uh, so as soon as you get away from the idea of opposites, and as you say, aspects along a line, you can you can begin to understand how you need to come back to balance. And that balancing point is constant. You can never have one particular fulcrum with, with a balance above it without this constant movement up and down. So this act of balancing is constant. And, and so when, when the balance is out, you tend to be unhealthy. So you have to keep finding that balancing point. So if it's yeah. out down way, one way here, you've got to go out the other way to bring it back into balance and then come into that, that centering point. So it's very much a rebalancing. Yeah, I love that. And and doing that within in individuals, but also within our cultures, because we've been so far swung, you know, in one direction so that we're kind of rebalancing that at the moment as well. It's, so, it's such interesting stuff. Um, and um, yeah, what came to mind when you were talking was the, the many faces of the Buddha, you know, that expression, the many faces of the Buddha, because, you know, there are times when we perhaps need to be wrathful or, you know, that actually that's the balance, that's the appropriate action in the energies that are surrounding. The act of balancing is, is, is conditional upon the environment in which we're traveling. Uh, and... Uh... Sometimes the greater lessons come when the environment changes more. And then we're coming back to the uh, the traveling through the abyss where we're going to be doing a lot more balancing and there's going to be a lot more shifting in order to maintain balance. balance. So yes, uh, uh, we have many ways, have to look in many directions to to maintain that balance. It's not necessarily just a, a lever on either side. You're, you, you've got, it's like a, a, a circular plate on, on a pin like this <laughs> so, right. so you've got to kind of like look to all directions to to find that balance and and i wouldn't say that it was easy in any ways at all because uh, th there's a lovely expression that jung is told love never ends and the potential to to love more means the potential to be challenged more to be able to love more <laughs> You think if they to reach the stage of an archangel, you must have gone through some pretty pretty mean challenges. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're certainly going through that as a 
it's a collective is kind of forging forging diamonds at the moment i think for as you know collectively with the processes that we're going through i i think the secret is to think also that we're, we're being helped by many many higher beings they're 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 really are trying to help us so we just we get in the way we've got to get out of the way of ourselves we've got to lose the ego and and uh just yeah <laughs> thank you so we'll much there. that's that's oh. that's just because we're coming back to our heart isn't it and uh you know re-anchoring reconnecting thank you so much Absolutely. this has been an yeah. incredible conversation um and uh so grateful for you coming on today and oh. and sharing all your amazing insights rory well, th thank you very much, Sarah. But I, I have to say, most of them come from other people. I've just, just accumulated these these, these things. Uh, I, I, I've had the, the wonderful opportunity to meet some amazing people, geniuses, and to and and to learn one thing: study from the geniuses in the past. It's like well, you've yeah. integrated it incredibly well, really, really holding that energy and and presenting it in a way that that everyone's really able to relate to. So, so thank you so much. Um, You're too um, kind. Thank you very much. Thank you. And do look up Rory. I'm going to put the, the video um, link below. So um, do look up Rory. Thanks so Thank much for listening, much. everyone. Thank you. Many blessings.